Damn, son, where'd you find this? Yo, boo, boo, boo. follow up with you Kaz about Sunday because Sunday was quite oh, an experience did you watch it Lino uh I still have yet to watch it uh it's on my list but um I'm gonna get around to it oh uh, I mean I might as well just show you what happened huh? you can spoil it though yeah, yeah yeah go for it all right so I'm sure it's on YouTube at this point what uh, would you what would you rate that whole show one out of ten one being the worst, ten being the best. Um, like a five and a half, yeah. six. The like, women's match, best match of the night. I felt. Yeah, I, I I thought the women's match was really good. I like the um. I like the what was that match? The cinematic match. I know a lot of people yeah. always rag on cinematic matches i don't get why people hate cinematic matches yeah i think they're overdone but i i like them so as i get this all set up here i mean i'm not gonna lie i was pretty drunk that night i had only had maybe yeah two (laughs) drinks so i i I was feeling that they were pretty strong drinks but still man it it was the kind of thing like i said on our watch along which you can see on our youtube channel that's the kind of thing that would sober you up. All right, Lino, you ready for this? Let's do it. Right, you haven't seen this yet? No, not yet. No, this is new for me. Wow, I can't... So I hope this doesn't skip around too much because this is a... Uh... So at the half hour mark of the match, the ring is expo- supposed to explode. Oh, yeah. Get some medical attention in here, I think. Yep, Eddie had to sell it, <laughs> and then <laughs> Moxley Dude, cut a to promo. Eddie, though. Yeah, Moxley cut a promo for the crowd afterwards, where he's like, "You're lucky you can't build a bomb worth shit." And they they made that a storyline, <laughs> but basically, like Kenny Omega. Uh, and Don Callis made the ring bat on purpose because they wouldn't, didn't get one, didn't want to give Moxley the satisfaction of even having this crazy death, essentially. And even a, the a barbed death match. wire, even the barbed wire, like on the the tables or whatever they got set up, looks so like fake to me. They're like too properly like placed there. It doesn't look like actual barbed wire. Yeah, the. I knew something like they weren't using actual barbed wire because uh, like Kenny's arms weren't getting cut. His back wasn't getting cut. Like the only thing that really got cut was just their foreheads from blading. But yeah, like if it was real barbed wire, like it didn't dig in, they bounced off of it a lot, which again, I get, but I don't know. It's just the actual wrestling in the match was good. It's just the explosions really took away from the match. Yeah, the barbed wire doesn't even have to be real. I'm not saying it has to be real, but it just looked fake to me. I don't like it. Like, I don't know. It wasn't wrapped around the ropes. uh, I respect Callison. Uh Go ahead. (laughs) Now, I was just going to say, I respect Callison Omega, like trying to um, come up with a reason as to why they did that. But it's like, oh, that's kind kind of weak, though. It's I would have just ignored it if I were them. Do you think that was really the 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 plan all along? Or Monday morning, they're like, oh, shit, we got to come no. up with something to make up for that fiasco. Yeah, I, I think uh, Tony Khan tried to uh, spin it that way right away. Like, oh, uh, I don't know what people were expecting. Like, thank goodness Kenny Omega doesn't know how to make a bomb. But it's like, Am I supposed to believe that Kenny Omega was out there at the fucking ring, like fusing together the bombs and explosions? 
Like those are clearly yeah. like mortars used for pyro. Like AEW had to have their crew set this up. Like was Kenny Omega out there setting up all the barbed wire and explosives during no, the you had a match? match that night? You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's so stupid that they tried to pass it off on on Kenny Omega, and then him and Kalis having to do the whole, uh, you know, oh, we you know we we didn't want to give Moxley the satisfaction of going out like that. But it's like, I know you guys didn't set this up. Like, AEW's people clearly set this up. Even in kayfabe, like, it wouldn't wouldn't make sense. And in real life, it wouldn't make sense. I don't know. It's just, I find the whole thing to be kind of weak, how they, they try to explain it. And I know Moxley and Kingston on Impact, they, or Impact, I ruined the joke already, but they joke that Impact ruined the bomb or made the bomb shitty. I was like, okay, well, that sucks for all the people that work at Impact because they're just getting buried left and right. Like, I don't know. I just... there, there were reports that Kenny was backstage after the explosion. He was pretty pissed off and not happy. Like, yeah. how the fuck did they not go over that before they did it? They could have had a dress rehearsal for that, I feel. How did so... they... That happened on live television. I know that they probably did that because they didn't want to have a ton of explosive. Because maybe you know the state of Florida or some athletic commission stepped in and said, "Hey, you can't. You guys can't just have an explosion like that." I don't know, but I mean, if you're working with a group of professional people, people who do explosions for like movies or TV shows or pyrotechnics for sports and wrestling, I feel like they should be able to say like, yeah, this is absolutely going to be enough to um, set off an explosion. And it looks like an explosion, but won't hurt anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, it I mean, definitely. It could have looked more devastating if like they set off something that shot off more smoke or something like that. I don't know. It just, it didn't look good. And it really took away from the match because both guys, despite, you know, the explosions, quote unquote, looking really bad, they had a really solid match. But, you know, as I, I explained to one of my friends, my friend Rome, I said, dude, if you go to a restaurant and the appetizers are great, the drinks are strong and great, they bring out this delicious tomahawk steak and then they just come out and dump shit all over it. You're not going to remember how good the appetizers or the drink were, how good the steak looked. You're just going to remember, dude, they dumped shit all over my food. <laughs> like, like it, it, it just, it took a, a lot away from that match and it took a lot away from the show. I feel like that's all, obviously that's all anybody talked about. Like no one was talking about how good the women's match was or how hard anybody worked. All they could focus on was that 15 seconds out of a three, four hour show that just ruined everything for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, it was, I don't know. It just it wasn't good. It just was not good. I didn't even think the match was that good. Fuck it. I don't even like AEW. <laughs> <laughs> the more I see Kenny Omega, the more <laughs> I hate him. The more I think he's very, very overrated. The more I, th- the more I want to give credit to his opponents in Japan for making those matches what they were, because I said for years I think Okada is kind of a boring wrestler. Blah blah blah. The more I see Kenny Omega over here wrestling, the more I want to give credit to Okada for those fucking matches. So you think you're thinking Okada is or Okada Omega is not as uh, as good as advertised? No, not at all. I will say, like, if if someone was told that this guy was known as, like, the best bout machine and he broke the most prolific wrestling critic, Dave Meltzer's, uh, you know, rating system on multiple occasions and got higher than the limit, and then you see some of the matches that the guy has had, it would seem, I would think, to a more casual viewer, um, kind of, he would seem kind of overrated. That's what I would think, you know, like, or yeah, like if I told uh, my girlfriend that this guy is really awesome and that he had all these crazy matches and then she saw that, I don't know, maybe she would think like, hmm, this isn't that good. I feel like when he was in Japan, 
that was just a different Kenny Omega. He he couldn't be what he is in AEW in Japan because they wouldn't allow that. You know what I mean? They wouldn't allow like the you know weird comedy bullshit over in Japan. So he couldn't do that shit. I think in his well, you know, other than when he wrestled for fucking whomever and wrestled a child yeah, and a blow up doll and all that shit. I think that's truly what Kenny Omega likes in wrestling. You think so? Yes, I do. So for me, I feel like it's too much of like the being the elite type humor. I feel like that it's a lot of that being put into the actual show. And, you know, I think I also said this when we were watching the show on Sunday with uh, John and, and Lynch Cassidy. I think that AEW does too much of like, ha, 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 you guys get this joke. Oh, here, let me explain the joke anyway. Like, the, I, I guess that's yeah. the only way I could kind of come up with uh, describing it. But it's it's really frustrating uh, to watch sometimes because – even this past Wednesday when I was watching um, Pentagon had a, a translator and I'm like, you know, the him having like a, a translator is cool, but like Pentagon was being a heel, but Pac and, or Pac and Phoenix, who are the other two members of Death Triangle, were pure baby faces on Sunday, like pure, pure baby faces. Like, why is Pentagon this asshole heel talking shit about Cody Rhodes' unborn daughter through his translator? And I'm like, who is this guy? And, you know, one of my friends is like, oh, he's a guy that's been on Being the Elite a bunch of times. I'm like, well, I don't watch Being the Elite. So, like, I'm not going to know that. Like, why would I just know that? Like, Being the Elite's not something that I'm very interested in watching. And I don't like having to watch that or even know, like, the backstories from stuff like that to be able to keep up. I don't want to have to do that. Because, first of all, it's not wrestling anyway. And I don't want to watch wrestlers do like okay comedy for 20 minutes i got it that's not my that's not for me so i don't want to have to watch that to understand what's going on but anyway i'm digressing uh i just find that uh kenny i i feel like there's no one to kind of reel him in or reel a lot of the guys in when it comes to some of that stuff like i feel like when they first started auw that I thought it was going to be kind of like an American version of New Japan, but I feel like they do a lot of the stuff that um, WWE does, and it's kind of a turnoff, I guess, because it just I've been watching that too much from WWE, and I want something different and a, a big time promotion, and I I'm not getting that all the time. I get we get it sometimes. Sometimes they they do have matches like that, but I don't know. It, it just um, it's been very jarring to go to from Moxley, who was probably the best book baby face, probably one of the better book champions of the last few years to Kenny Omega saying 69 me Don on national oh television. My God. How, I mean, how does that get through? How does Tony Khan as a booker and promoter Look at that and say, yeah, you can go out there and tell Don Callis to 69 with you in the middle of the ring. And then they did it. I don't know. That was, <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, north-south position, 69 made Don. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was what? So it's weird. not even funny. I don't get it. I don't. The, the, I... the company doesn't know what direction it wants to go in. And there's no set course or path it's like all over the place and maybe that's just how they like it maybe you have to watch being the elite and to get aew maybe that just is what it is and they're set on that core group of fans that they have that watch that and get what's going on with aew and their show but they all it's all coincides in the one and like you said damon they had an opportunity to come out and be that new Japan, you know, USA or whatever, but they haven't done that. They've, they, they failed. They have failed thus far. I can think of one match Kenny's had that I've watched singles match. That was, you know, reminiscent of his shit in Japan. And I'm, I'm not trying to say, well, he's got to do everything he did in Japan over here. He can do different shit, but 
the match he had against Pac, like that 30 minute Iron Man match. That was fantastic. Yeah. Give me more of that. Every match he's had with Moxley or, you know, whatever has been, you know, it's been like, there's always like a stipulation or it's like death match style. And it's like, just give me that best so, bout machine shit. The first match was like a lights out unsanctioned match. So that, that match acts actually doesn't count like on their records. Like it officially never happened, which I hate unsanctioned matches. Like if it happened on TV and they had a match and there was a referee and motherfuckers rang the bell, like then the match happened. Like you can't j- like, it's already not real. I-, I mean, I know people out there would hate if I said that it's not real, but like it, like, why are we having matches that don't count on a, a fictional show? It's very silly to me, but um, yeah, you know, I, I just, I feel like AEW used to have some of what we were looking for, like at the beginning, like, I feel like the pandemic might be a part of why I've been so turned off by it. You know, like, I, I feel like because it's the pandemic, maybe they think they can try some different things and see what sticks. But I, I, you know, wanted them to kind of get back to having just focusing on good matches, like telling the stories in the ring. That's what was going to set them apart from being WWE or uh, being different from WWE. Like, I don't know. I just think that the Don Callis and Kenny Omega thing um, has been kind of turning me off from Kenny. Not that Don is bad. I like Don Callis. I just guess that like, heel Kenny Omega being like this weird quirky heel champion is not really doing it for me. Yeah. I just, and I'll admit I'm not even a big fan of AEW. I haven't really watched it, but what I've watched and what I, when I try to watch it and I try to get into it, I'm just immediately turned off. I, I watch, I I turned it on after NXT last night and tried to get into it. And I just, I just couldn't, I don't know what it is. I just maybe it's just not for me. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah, and that's fine. I don't know. I mean, it that can change. Maybe if NXT does move to Tuesday nights, like you know the rumor is, it, you know it is hard to like watch NXT and then try to watch AEW, which is hard to keep up with because they're on the same night. So maybe if they're on separate nights, it'll give me an opportunity to really, you know, be able to sit down and watch AEW live, but. I don't know. It just, I feel like I'm always shitting on it, but it's just from what I've seen from the product thus far, it just hasn't really moved the needle for me too much. And they got a lot of talented wrestlers in that company. Um, And I'm not even saying Kenny Omega isn't talented. He's proved that he is. He's had fantastic matches, but I don't know. Just maybe one day. Maybe one day it'll just click for me, but as of right now, it's just it's it's not. Yeah, I guess maybe it, it could also just be pandemic era wrestling. Maybe the, yeah, uh, just you know, kind of down on it as a whole. I don't know. Maybe that could be it because I I do feel like I have been a little overly negative towards wrestling uh, over the last uh, last year or so. Oh, that I've, definitely I've, has something to do with it. Absolutely. By the way, uh, Lino, he's going to um, call back in here in a minute. I, I had to set up a call-in number for him because uh, he was having some issues with, uh, like I said, Xfinity was trying to fuck on him. So he, he'll he'll be back soon. Hopefully he can call in. I mean, I want to hear his take. I don't know if he watches AEW. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, one, if we could get him connected here. You know, we'll we'll ask him, but I, I, man, AEW something about it has just been like it's not been clicking with me. Uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of wrestling really hasn't been clicking with me. Like it's been hard to get into the New Japan Cup. Like I just don't yeah, feel. Sure. I haven't felt like watching it. Is there something about pandemic era wrestling has not really filled me with uh, a lot of joy? so to speak no it'll it'll be refreshing to watch wrestlemania and hear a crowd yeah um however many they're letting in um a couple thousand i think 
Yeah, whatever the Super Bowl was, I believe. Um, that'll be refreshing. We can talk about NXT for a minute. Um, you had a little uh, dude. You got what the fuck? The what the fuck? Titles, huh? Okay, so this is one of the most mind blowingly dumb things. What was it? Dakota Kai got pinned last week in the women's tag team title match. And because she wasn't legal, they did this whole thing where Regal was like, hey, like my girls, you know, deserve another crack at the titles on Adam Pierce. It's like basically like, fuck off. They gave us kind of, a, you know, the storyline was basically Adam Pierce didn't want the women's tag team titles on NXT because they felt like NXT was a lesser brand. And I get the feeling that, that that's probably a real life sentiment sentiment because the women's titles are supposed to be defended on all three brands. It's been defended on NXT maybe a handful of times. NXT team has never been the tag team champions. That is like, it's a waste of time because they have so many women's teams in NXT, but they never gave the women any shots or rarely gave the women any shots. So they decided to create women's uh, tag team titles for NXT. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez were crowned the tag team champions after the title match they had the week prior. They faced off with Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart, which is a fantastic match. But they lost the fucking belts they just <laughs> got. They lost them in the first night. They were the champions for like 45 minutes. What was even the point? Yeah, it was it was odd, you know, thinking now why they might have done it. Um, well, as you've seen in the show, EO beat um, uh, Tony, Tony Storm. Storm to retain yeah. her title. And later on in the show, she confronted Raquel and said, you know, I want you next, blah, blah, blah. But if they were going to go in that direction, why even put the titles on them for 20 minutes? Like you said, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Why not just have, okay, we're going to have, since you guys got screwed and Shotzi and Ember will probably would have been next in line. We're going to, uh, we're going to give them, uh, you know, we're going to have you guys wrestle for the belts or even do like a three way where it's Shotzi and Ember versus Indy and Candice and, uh, um, Dakota and Raquel it they there are so many different ways they could have done it instead of just giving them the belts and then having Dakota and Raquel lose it just it was really dumb I don't understand the whole the purpose of that I'm I, of course I get it that they probably wanted to have Dakota and Raquel win the tag titles like be a tag team at some point because I'm sure people probably really like them as a team and then immediately get Raquel into winning the uh, women's championship from EO. Yeah. That she won war games. Um, I don't know. I just, I, there, there's so many things that have been happening in wrestling recently. I'm just scratching my head. Like, why did they do that? What was even the purpose of that? Oh, NXT. I mean, they can get, get it too. They're not perfect either. They do dumb shit, and that was an example. Why Why couldn't they just have that Shotzi, Blackheart, Ember Moon, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez match for the titles, for the initial title? You know what I mean? Why not Why not just save it till TakeOver? Oh, yeah. because, well, they got to have Raquel oh, yeah. fucking probably wrestle EO at, at TakeOver, stand and deliver, which the first night is on a fucking Wednesday <laughs> on USA. Then the second night is on a Thursday. And then you got WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday. Oh, my goodness. Because Friday is the Hall of Fame. Oh, they're not having SmackDown? I don't think so. Really? I think SmackDown might be taking a week off. I, I'm almost positive. Um, so they're doing a whole nother cla a new class for the Hall of Fame? Yeah, like, I don't even know what. Last year, just whatever <laughs> i was super pumped to see if you know juice juice and liger like over here to accept that that would have been cool yeah i know it's molly holly or something as the first inductee 
Okay, so let's see. Dude, that week is going to be fucking just so much wrestling. So they were, it's still to be determined. They haven't been brought in. And then they have Molly Holly in the 2021 class. Are they going to do it all at once? I don't know. That's so weird. It's basically, it's like a really good class too. <laughs> I, I really don't see them just canceling SmackDown for a week. As like the uh, last go home show to WrestleMania. Hang on, let me look up the schedule because uh, April sixth. What's what's April sixth? What day is that? April sixth is that would be a Tuesday. Okay, so I guess they're gonna do it on Tuesday, so they can have the Hall Smackdown of Fame on Friday. Yeah, the Hall of Fame. Okay, so you got Raw, the Hall of Fame, NXT Stand and Deliver Night One, NXT Stand and Deliver Night Two, SmackDown, WrestleMania Night One, WrestleMania Night Two. Fuck me. It's also so weird that they're just gonna have a regular ass SmackDown in the middle of WrestleMania and Takeover. Yeah, that and like I really wish they would have just included you know, NXT TakeOver into WrestleMania. I thought that's what they were going to do with it being two nights again. Like, that would have been so much cooler of an announcement. Like, to announce, like, oh, we're doing a TakeOver and it's on a Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, cool. <laughs> I would have I would have done... Um... And it's, it's at the CWC with, like, Zero fans, really. I would have done uh, a takeover, like a smaller takeover on like Friday night, right? Maybe even if you got the crew to do it Saturday during the day at the CWC, even pre-tape it and just show it like during the day so people could really get their day started. They'll watch NXT during the day. And then on that, you would probably have that main event by like the tag titles, Cruiserweight title, North American title. Those would be your main matches. I would have the women's title and the NXT title on WrestleMania night one. Yeah. Then I would have WrestleMania night one. That would be Bianca and Sasha night two would be edge and Roman. And that's how I would just lay it out. That just seemed like it would make sense. Like it, you can't say like NXT is the third brand and then just never include them in shit until it's convenient for you. Like it's still very clearly a developmental brand, but then they're trying to, make nxt evolve which is nxt's nxt is just like such a clusterfuck they don't know what they're doing they have way too many people for that that company and you know it it just the whole thing seems like they sign people get people just for the sake of doing it and then they have all this programming and just fill it with the same people over and over again instead of just spreading things out and putting shit in more logical positions yeah, I mean, I really do wish NXT was truly the third brand. And I really wish they would get away from the draft. But like you just mentioned, they have so many people in that company. You almost have to do it. So I hate that it's even called the draft. Like the well, superstar yeah, shakeup made more sense. Or... um I don't know. They, I feel like they should come up with a different, a different name for it, because like, they're like SmackDown drafts the SmackDown Women's Champion. It's like, yeah, fucking duh. Why would you not draft <laughs> one of your own champions? Yeah, that's so stupid. They first of all, I think the champion should just be left out of it. You should just be stuck on the show that you're on. Like, it, and then they did the dumb shit where they drafted the SmackDown champions to Raw and the Raw champions to SmackDown and then just swapped the belts. Yeah. What the fuck was the purpose of that? Ooh. That was so dumb. Do we even like wrestling anymore? So Do you honestly asked, ever ask yourself that? I ask myself that a lot. Like, I, I asked myself that when I laid down to go to sleep Sunday night. I was like, man, why do I even bother with their shit? And I started thinking, of like, man... All we did was just shit on AEW that entire time. Maybe that's not maybe that's not what we should be doing. But then mm-hmm. I was like, but then who wants to hear us just be overly positive all the time? That wouldn't be fun. That's not realistic to just be like, eh, everything is great. 
I support everyone. Everyone is fantastic in the world of wrestling. The booking is awesome. The characters are awesome. Everything that happens makes complete and total sense and like doesn't frustrate me as a longtime wrestling fan. There's way less awesome in wrestling than there is, uh, you know, more of it. So I always say, like, the good stuff's always out there. You just have to go out there and find it. I'm sure there's always good stuff happening in the world of wrestling, but there's so much of it that you don't always catch it, especially when you've got, like, the guns that you like to stick to. It makes it seem like, man, wrestling just sucks if you're watching, like, the same promotions over and over again. Like, to be honest, like, all I really watch is I watch WWE, I watch AEW, but I watch WWE the most, obviously, New Japan. I haven't been watching any ROH. No. Uh, I haven't. I watch Impact rarely. I might catch one of their um, either internet specials or maybe a big pay per view, but I, I don't really catch it that much. I just, I just been really bad, man. Like, I'm starting to turn into the guy that like prefers to go back and watch like old stuff, just because it just feels it feels so much better. Dude, I watched uh, old nwa tna where one of the main matches was jim duggan versus jeff jarrett from 2003 <laughs> and the crowd was going fucking bananas dude they were going nuts the commentators were going nuts like everything was so hype dude and it's crazy to think because you know back in the day people used to make fun of nwa tna like oh my god it's so bad dude watching it now with 2021 eyes and like yeah. just seeing that crowd oh it was a breath of fresh air like Mike Tanay was because uh, I love Don West because he's like, you know, I'm not too familiar with Jim Duggan. Like I never really had a chance to see uh, too many of his matches before. So, you know, this is all new to me. And Mike Tanay is like, yeah, dude, like Jim Duggan, this is how he used to be back in the day, back in like the early part of his career. Cause he was like, if you watch the match, he was more like mid South Jim Duggan. He just Coked had out like of his mind. just a crazy brawler hitting Jerry with chairs, all that shit. Like people like don't, know about like old school jim duggan like everyone knows like two by four fucking three point stance jim duggan and he was like a big WWE. star yeah Back dude jim the... yeah jim duggan in the like early mid 80s and mid south dude he used to have some crazy ass brawls <laughs> yeah, he was he was crazy over man or jim duggan if you watch mid south because <laughs> bill watts couldn't say duggan for some reason <laughs> but hey, listen, we got to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have Joey Lino calling into the Toff Studios, and we'll be talking about the Thunderdome and WrestleMania coming up next month. So don't go away. Keep it locked.
Yeah, like it's the crowd, isn't it? Yep, yeah, it's the crowd. It's I think the that's the crowd. Just, yeah. And I we've said you. this on, you know, many past episodes of the XNO Wrestling Fan. It's the lack of crowd. Yeah, I bet you that our reactions to a lot of this stuff would be way, way different if the crowd was reacting to it. Because oh, absolutely. Because we said before, that seems to kind of be the indicator of what is or isn't good, right? You know, like yes. we've seen so many matches where we're like, I think this is good. I think this might be a really good match, but you can't tell because there's no one making any noise. Like, it just, like, seems like they're just doing moves and it's like what the fuck's happening like how how could i enjoy this but you know i i enjoy it to a certain extent but i just i miss that roar of the crowd man like um that ufc that had fans at abu dhabi and the crowd was going nuts and max holloway had that crazy performance man like that yeah. shit was giving me chills because i hadn't heard anything like that in so long i hadn't heard anything like that for almost a year it's, it's like a drug, man. I need to hear that roar of the crowd, dude. Oh, yeah. it's like... And I'm not even a performer. I'm just a, like a person that likes wrestling, to watch wrestling. But not having that noise, even like AEW, it's not the same. And, <laughs> and then for some reason, TNT, on top of like having to sweeten the audio sometimes because everyone's so spaced out at Daily's Place for AEW shows, somehow TNT started playing like NBA basketball audio audio. <laughs> oh, have you heard about this? I heard about, this about it, but I, I didn't hear it. It was really weird, man. It was really weird. It was like just basketball audio over the top of it. And I think it was only for TNT because people were watching on fight TV and they said they didn't hear that. But yeah, man, it just watching this weird stilted audio where everything is sweet and you can tell that it's a crowd from the video game because you can hear like the random person yelling like John Cena like it's it's not the same it's it's gonna be odd like okay WWE is gonna have Wrestlemania inside of a football stadium with uh, let's say 20,000 people that's gonna Uh, be to my ears very refreshing like ah, but then the next night, do we just go back to the Thunderdome? You know what I mean? So yeah, they're they're supposed to have twenty five thousand people. Um, I'm assuming on both nights, the tenth and the eleventh of April. And they're currently filming all their shows at Tropicana Field, correct? Yes, they are. And that and who plays there? The the Rays. Okay, and baseball is about to start. I think baseball will have already started by WrestleMania. Yeah, so it starts the week, like a few days before WrestleMania Sunday or Saturday this year, you would say. So um, that's been one of the things that I'm that I'm reading is like they got to figure out a decision because starting right around the time that WrestleMania is going to happen, they're not going to be able to use Thunderdome anymore. So yeah, so. They're kind of in a conundrum there because not only is baseball started, um, you can't do anything basketball arena wise or hockey. What do you do? And they got to stay. I wish in everything F- Florida, I guess. I wish everything would be at the Capitol Wrestling Center. I love the setup that they have for that, and I love that they have fans there, but they're still socially distanced. It's just like, if the, I, I mean, I, I haven't heard that this is going to happen yet. But if they were to use that, I'd be all for it. They might not have a choice. Yeah, that's yeah, all that's, I can that, up right now. That's what they were using before, uh, right? Last year. That's where they did Mania last year, right? Yeah, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Performance Center, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to do it in the CWC and then have like the, the current setup with the fans behind the glass, I'm I'm down for that. Uh, I mean, I remember before there was that NXT outbreak of COVID, I thought that um, having the NXT trainees be the crowd for the Raws and SmackDowns, I was like, oh, this feels kind of normal again. But then, you know, there was an outbreak and they they had to stop that. So, you know, I wish there was a way to go back to some sort of middle ground, you know. They need to move shop to Texas. 
I was going <laughs> to say they're having 40,000 for baseball in Texas. The Canelo fight was packed, bro. Yeah, it was loud. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. I, I would not be shocked if they tried to go to Texas. Dana White was like, I'm on the phone with everybody in Texas because you know he wanted to try to do something at Cowboy Stadium. He was probably going to try to get uh, Poirier and uh, McGregor three at Cowboy Stadium probably as quick as he could. But I think he said that uh, Dallas wasn't uh, Dallas, Dallas wasn't opening anything up like that or they they seem kind of something was off the table but i can't remember the details at this very moment but he said he was definitely trying to have something at houston but yeah um i don't know that i guess they got to come up with a plan soon unless they're going to just have shows at the performance center in the fucking parking lot so they can have fans i was just going to say like speaking of texas i don't i can't think of anywhere that uh, WWE would even be able to run in Texas right now. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of options out there, but all the major, you know, 20,000 feet arenas like they've been using are all going to be used because like Cass said, I mean, everything's going to be in season pretty soon. Um, let's see, what are we, April? So are there any smaller um, like football stadiums that they could use in Texas, like a, like a D2 school even? I was going to say they could probably use Jerry World, but um, I mean, knowing the state of Texas, knowing Jerry Jones, they're probably going to be having like a bunch of huge concerts, full capacity at that stadium pretty soon. Well, they could use uh, Texas Stadium, College Stadium, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Although Thunderdome and the Jerry Dome and Jerry World would be very, very, very lit. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah. They don't even need to use the football field part of it because, I mean, that place is so huge. You could just set up shop in, like, uh, one of the lounges or, like, one of the, you know, not locker rooms, but, like, one of the other parts of the stadium and just, uh, you know, set up the ring and have something going on there. Yeah. <laughs> this, I, I would not be shocked if events after all of this happened – just created a venue where they could just run shows at after this like it's just like a go-to place that we this is just where wwe owns we can just do shows here kind of like their own fight island yeah like their own fight island like it doesn't have to be super huge but they could even just set it up where like they could do mostly indoor shows there like nxt shows they can do like I don't know. I just feel like WWE, I, I'm shocked that they don't have like their own kind of venue that they could set up. That's just theirs that they own. Yeah. You and I guess, yeah, it's the performance center, but still it's, it's not the same. It's somewhere where they could have a paid attendance though. You can't really do that at the performance center right now. Right. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. Um, it's WrestleMania it's coming up quick it's it's in a month it's four weeks yeah mm-hmm. also where the hell is the time gone i can't believe it's already midway through or almost midway through march dude it's almost national stone cold day <laughs> <laughs> next uh next tuesday right yep, yep. 316 definitely gonna have a couple of steve weisers on that day But uh, yeah, WrestleMania is coming up. NXT. Oh, Lino, we we actually uh, wanted to circle back to something because uh, you know we we were waiting for you to call in. But uh, do you watch a lot of AEW, or do you just kind of just keep up with it from what you read online, or do you uh, you know watch highlights that sort of thing? So it's never like appointment television for me. I did tune in. Uh, almost regularly over the summer I would I mean because just because you know I was cooped up in the house and um you know I, I kind of wanted to see what was going on um it was still kind of new at that point to them being on TNT um but now it's like I'm, I'm more of an NXT fan anyway I mean NXT is if I had to do a power rankings of my favorite wrestling shows NXT is number one so I mainly just keep up with it through like the websites that I get my wrestling news from and from you guys. And that's really about it. Okay. Yeah. So you know, we were just, 
we were just kind of talking after, you know, we talked about the explosion and how <laughs> we even questioned, like, do we even like wrestling anymore? Because we were talking about a lot of the the stuff that AEW has done that seems kind of off-putting, like the mm -hmm. way that Omega has been presented and uh, AEW, you know, is not the same guy that was kind of hyped up from being the best bout machine in Japan and having all these crazy matches, that sort of thing. So um, I guess, yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on like, is like, is it us? Is it me and Kaz? Or, or is like AEW actually really good and we're just two cranky old dudes that don't get it? Like, what do you think about AEW? Like in a nutshell? Uh, you know, I mean, I like, I like that it's an alternative. I mean, I think it's a lot more, intriguing than anything that tna has put out since like 2007 i mean i don't like i don't have a i can't say that i really have a negative perception about it i'm just kind of like meh like i said wednesday nights is more of like an nxt thing for me i mean i keep up with that more i mean i'm, I'm rooting for AEW to do well but i just yeah it, it's like okay so so before my connection got dropped uh somebody brought up the fact that they were kind of expecting it to be an american version of new japan which is also what i expected and i'm not really you know getting getting that kind of a vibe from it i'm getting like okay yeah it's it's, it's better than tna it's, it's it's a better alternative than that but it's just really it's not anything special to me and i think a lot of that could just be because not just because but i think the fact that there's no crowd also puts them at a pretty big disadvantage i'm sure you know if they had a crowd that was like the ecw arena like if i got those types of vibes from it when i tuned in then you know I'd, I'd be a lot more inclined to turn it on every week um but yeah i think it's just scale is a good word to describe it okay so um let me ask you this you mentioned ecw um with wwe obviously being wwe and AEW kind of being like this weird version of like wcw and impact and like a little like nxt or pwg combined do you see there ever being like a a modern version of ecw like a more adult oriented wrestling alternative do you think that would be able to fly and not necessarily extreme to the point of ecw but something that's like this is geared for adults like we're not here for kids like if you want kid stuff you got to watch wwe or go somewhere else Mm -hmm. I think that formula would work, but I think if anyone's going to do that, it's going to be NXT. I mean, um, when NXT was kind of what I consider its peak in like 2015, um, it, it reminded me a lot of ECW because, you know, they were in the same venue every week. You know, the crowd was was into it. They were doing stuff that you didn't see on WWE on Raw or SmackDown, um, not to the same level that ECW was doing it. But I feel like um, if like I said, if that's going to happen, uh, in in today's age i think it's going to be nxt um and i could see universal pushing wwe to be like hey you know we got AEW breathing down our neck even though I, I they're switching to tuesdays now though right that's the rumor yeah yeah, yeah that's is, yeah so um so i mean i don't know you know i i think um it would work i just uh i don't know if i see AEW like being the company that's going to put out that that brand of wrestling i mean we're a few years into AEW's existence now i just i don't see it happening but um who knows i mean you know they, they could i know we did a deep dive on ratings last week they could be like oh well you know the ratings aren't really doing that well so maybe we need to change our direction and put out this type of a product instead okay yeah so i guess i said to make sure i wasn't muted uh, i guess um you know follow up to that is you know, what What makes something a successful alternative to WWE? You know, like, do you, it, does it have to just go out of its way to be different? Um, you know, do they have to try to avoid even acknowledging WWE's existence? Like, what makes something a good alternative? I think for me, they just have to have, like, established talent that the regular casual wrestling fan is going to get behind and I was kind of thinking about this earlier just I was thinking about how I mean it kind of bums me out that Raw and Smackdown are still they still feel stale to me like we had mentioned a second ago and I'm like you know at this point 
you can't have you can't just have one show for WWE because if you determine I'm sorry I, I hate how Raw and SmackDown are run as different prom- promotions I wish it could just be one promotion and that was it but you're not going to see that because of the fact that you have this huge TV deal with Fox and you have this huge TV deal with Universal so if either one of those shows becomes the B show it's going to piss off one of those networks that's so got a lot of money behind you so what what just like this what makes me feel discouraged is the fact that okay WWE has this deal with Fox right and they have the NFL that they can use as a way to advertise their product as far as TV shows that like a huge percentage of the population watches live I mean the NFL is like really the only game in town left it's not like the days where everyone's watching the episode of who shot JR on Dallas or like the season finale of MASH like that you don't really see that anymore. If you look at the top 10 rated TV shows of last year, like nine or you know at least eight of them are going to be like NFL shows or NFL games. So that, that got me to think it's like, okay, well, if the WWE has all this, all these eyes on their product and they're still not changing it to where, you know, the, the, the casual fan is going to get interested. Like it was in the late nineties. It's like, are they ever going to do it at this point? It's like, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not really, I wish I could be more optimistic about like just the direction of WWE in general. And, and that, that goes for AEW too. Yeah. I, I just, I guess, you know, it got kind of got my wheels turning about how, you know, like you said, WWE kind of does the same things over and over again. It's kind of stale. I really do wish that they could find some way where since they had the WWE network, which is now going away in, um, this, is it going away this month with Peacock? Or is it? Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. So I don't even know how that's going to work. There's so much shit that I still wanted to get through and watch. And I had started watching on the network, like old WCW Saturday nights. And it took them forever to finally get that on the network and get around to digitizing a lot of that old stuff. It's really discouraging to hear that a lot of the people that have gone over to Peacock have had a lot of trouble finding all of that. But, you know, when they did have the network, it seemed like it would make a ton of sense to have uh, their shows all kind of be different. Like NXT yeah. is geared more towards the indie fans. They got NXT involved. That would be maybe more like their ECW, Raw and SmackDown were kind of presented different. Like Raw is like just WWE. SmackDown might present itself more as like a, a like traditional wrestling show. Like a, um, you know, it kind of like used to be that. It kind of used to be that. And SmackDown's yeah. like heyday, I would say. When like 2016. Had... Yeah. 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 It, well, it was like SmackDown that. was a wrestling show. Yeah. Like uh, the first, first brand split, it was kind of like that with the, the SmackDown 6 and everything like that. SmackDown was presented a little different than, than Raw. And every time they try something different and people like it, they just get away from it for some reason. Like 2016 SmackDown was incredible. And I have no clue why they just said, you know what? Yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. SmackDown to me has always been like the uh, the work rate show out of the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas Raw is more about storylines. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I also yeah. think Raw was always Vince's baby. So he always kind of leaned more towards Raw than SmackDown. I agree with that. You know, Raw, uh, Raw has always been treated as the A show. Um, that's why they swapped uh, Cena and Batista. For the world titles casino was more popular than batista and they're like well he's on our least popular show we gotta switch him so that's why i did that that draft in 2000 was it you know 2005 or six um i believe it was oh five it was, it was right around there though yeah so like they they swapped oh, five, yeah yeah they swapped cena and batista and you know it, it's very apparent that raw is definitely considered the the a show to SmackDown, and it's happened so many times at different like multi man matches. Was it this past Survivor Series or the year before? There was a couple of matches where Raw just destroyed SmackDown. There was, uh, I think, like 2019 or something like that, maybe 2018, where Raw just beat them in every match. And the New yeah. Day was the only SmackDown team that won a match. And they're like, we won. And then, like, no, it doesn't count because it was the pre show, which is another one of my pet peeves where the pre-show is somehow just not a real thing. <laughs> do you guys ever 
Do you guys see Vince ever selling it, selling the WWE? If he does, it'll be to NBC Universal. I've heard that lately. Yeah, he he. If he sells, they, it'll be to them. And then, would you say, Lino, he would probably have to be like a, you know, like a majority stakeholder or still have his hands in it somehow. Yeah, he would still be involved with the company. He just uh, NBC. It would be under the NBC Universal umbrella, and their stack uh, ticker would go away. It would just be part of the NBC or the Universal family. Now, you, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think if if it does ever go down, that's how it's going to be structured. I could see it. I could see it probably happening. And when Vince dies, yeah, I, I, guess. I would not be shocked if it happens that when Vince dies, whenever that is, because the dude is right, fucking uh, Wolverine. I don't know if that guy will oh, like ever forty die. or fifty years from now. His mom's you, still alive. Wow! Wow! <laughs> would you have confidence in NBC? You know, still having you know, Triple H running the show or something and kind of just stepping back, say, yeah, we own this, but we still want, you know, you guys to kind of just run it. Or do you think NBC would stick their nose in it and have their little say in what goes on and, you know, how it's... Well, and I feel like for the most part, it'd be like a hands-off approach to it. I'm kind of comparing. So when I talk about like NBC taking over, I'm thinking like kind of comparing it to how Disney took over Star Wars and now Star Wars is just under the Disney umbrella and Disney distributes it. But, you know, the people that were writing Star Wars still are the ones, as far as I know, like with a say on how all that gets written. Yeah. Yeah. I I was going to say it would make sense for NBC to just say, Hey, as you know, don't do X, Y, Z things, but for the most part, just keep doing what you do. Triple H, you run it. Stephanie, you, you know, you, you run it. You do whatever you got to do. And then other than that, we'll just leave you to your own devices. I, I feel like that's how it would go. I mean, that just would make sense in any situation, no matter what business it was. If you were acquiring a business, you wouldn't just get rid of everybody that helped make that business what it was, especially if you don't know a ton about it and then try to run it. It would make sense to keep some of those people around to keep the wheels turning. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, if- like Lino, Lino said, it would be kind of a hands-off approach. What if Vince outlives? I don't think Johnny Peacock's going to be doing the booking. <laughs> what if What if Vince outlives Hunter? That would be so. That would be so wild. It's not out of the realm of possibility. possibility. I want to say that would surprise me, but I don't think so. How old is Triple At- H? I'm not saying he's going to die soon, but <laughs> early early 50s now. But I could see Triple H getting burned out from running the company uh, faster than Vince did. Yeah, like, definitely. I I could see yeah. like say if Vince died tomorrow and Triple H had to take over, or you know at least just run like the wrestling side of things, I I could see Triple H maybe doing it for like ten years. I'm like, all right, I've had enough of this shit. I'm retired, retired. Like I'm good. I I could see that happening. Like it, it, if Vince dies, well, let's be honest. Everyone knows Stephanie's taking over. Stephanie's gonna run everything. Yeah, Shane's not. No, they're not letting Shane have anything because then everything would just be like raw underground and fucking weird MMA, like fake shoot fights. <laughs> like, I'm a big Declan fan, though. De- <laughs> Declan McMahon. Oh, yeah, that's my guy. He gave me a thumbs up at uh, LCA1. Nice, I'm Josh. calling it now. Vince is going to outlive him. Can we get the. Vince is going to live to be like 100 years old. Here man. Dude, can we get that on a bet? Alive, which I didn't know. Let me look up how old his mom is. I said, let's let's look up how old yeah. Vince's mom is because I said I would absolutely throw down an over under bet on Vince McMahon's uh, death age. I I would say over under what eighty nine point five. Oh, I take the over. This reminds me of um, <laughs> Mr. Burns' mom was alive Here's on the some... Simpsons, and <laughs> and, uh, and Homer found out. And he's like, Mr. Burns' mom is still alive. She's got to be 100 million years old. <laughs> Mr. McMahon's mom is 101 years old. About wow. 101. Wow. They know she was born in uh, 1920. Unbelievable, Jeez. dude. Unbelievable. How old was his dad when he died? He was in his 60s, right? His dad was uh, pretty young when he died, yeah. Yeah, his dad was... But uh, deceivingly young when he died. He was only 69. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, Vince is already outlived. 
69 me by uh, quite a few years. Yeah, 69 me Vince Senior. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hey, shout outs to uh, Vince Senior. He's from fucking Harlem. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. bro. He's from Harlem world, man. Holy How shit. long did Jeff live? No homo. 72? Uh, yep, 72. 1882 wow. to 1954. So VJ is like establishing himself as the alpha because he's outlived all the other males in his family so far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vincent Kennedy McMahon, really a genetic jackhammer. He's what, 76? BK. Yeah, that's right. He'll be 76 in August. Yeah. What's the over-under you put it at? 89? Uh, 89.5. Yeah, I'm still going to go over. He over co-owns, 89? Yeah. I'm going to go under. He co-owns Tap Out. WWE actually, like, owns part of it. I didn't know that. Hmm. What the hell? Yeah, a- a- Authentic Brands Group owns half, and then WWE owns half. That is absolutely crazy, because anyone who is not familiar with, like, old school MMA, like especially like the NHB days, like no hold bar days. There was a guy who created it named Mask who would run around with face paint. Like these guys had the worst designs on their shirts. Like everything were like cages and like eagles picking up swords and all this shit. And now they make like basically like off brand Under Armour. Oh, I think weird. it was a little ridiculous that Mask's name was in the octagon for as long as it was. I'm not trying to downplay, you know, the contributions he made, but uh, seemed like didn't really seem like the proper honor. Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts, Damon? Well, he was in the UFC uh, Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of it is because you know he had such a uh, big. He had such a big influence on <laughs> turn us into Down River Top Team. He has such a big influence on um, like merchandising. Even though I, I'm just made fun of like the merch and all that stuff, but a lot of guys were <laughs> wearing tap out gear and getting sponsored. And you know, it was a real grassroots yeah. um, come up. You know, in the late '90s. Um, let's see here. I found that uh, they started tap out in '97. They were selling gear out the back of a Mustang. By 2007, the company had revenue of 22.5 million. And in 2009, uh, they had a target of 225 million, which is the year that uh, uh, Charles Lewis Mask died. But uh, yeah, dude, uh, I, I would give him a lot of credit. Like his show uh, had tap out on Versus. They found Cowboy Cerrone on that show. They found a bunch of uh, famous mm-hmm. fighters on that show. So yeah, I, 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 I give him his props as a businessman, as a kind of self-promoting that sort of thing because MMA in that sense it, and pro wrestling in that sense is very much like grassroots, like self-promotion. The squeaky wheel always gets the grease, that sort of thing. So, you know, these, these guys always make up these big personalities. It makes people notice them. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I respect that. All right, boys. Is there anything else we wanted to cover today on this uh, sports talk radio version of the Exegol wrestling fan? Yeah, having Lino on the phone is definitely giving me like ninety seven one fucking vibes. <laughs> Dude, so speaking of uh again real another quick, reference. I was just about to bring this up. I was just about to bring this up uh with when we were talking about Vince. Uh and his Wikipedia still says that he's the CEO of Alpha Entertainment, which I'm surprised that that's even still a thing because he doesn't own the XFL anymore. Man, that's crazy how that happened twice with the XFL for him. Yeah. Second time really wasn't his fault, I guess, but it no, doesn't make I, it any less crazy. People really liked it the second time around. I really liked it. It was really fun to watch. Yeah. And then it just it had bad luck. And then that, the fucking Rock bought it. <laughs> speaking of the Rock, <laughs> I was just going to say, do you think there's a chance that the Rock – could get a group of investors together to buy the WWE one day. Yeah, hmm. I I know that The Rock had kind of toyed with the idea of getting into um, the political realm, uh, basically being like the mixed race Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
I could see more of his um, his legacy outside of just being a wrestler and, and big time actor. I could see it more of like the business side of things. He seems very savvy in the sense of knowing who to work with to set up deals with uh, his ex wife. They have uh, you know all kinds of partnerships and businesses and things like that. Uh, I'm actually going to look up right now uh, who he partnered with because there's some venture group to buy XFL. That would be great. WWE one day. So Damon a second ago, like, so he asked me, um, what would it take for, you know, somebody to really compete with WWE? And I kind of went off on a tangent, but I was, what I was getting at was they need somebody with, you know, some, somebody needs uh, recognizable characters that the casual fan are going to get behind. Now, if the rock bought WWE, I think that's going to be the thing that like gets the casual fan into wwe again like how they were in the late 90s that'd be huge oh it'd be monumental redbird capital partners um i believe this is alex rodriguez's company he's one of the people involved with this how much oh did, nice how much did they buy the xfl for yeah let's see jerry cardendale uh, or cardinale excuse me he's a founder and managing partner uh, let's see. They bought it for pretty cheap, I want to say. Hey, I'm going back. My my internet's going slow now. They, wow. Um, $15 announced million. About, dollars. Yep. 15, How much? $15 million. 15 like, million. That's like an above average NFL quarterback salary right there. Like The Rock could have just bought it on his own if he probably would have wanted to. Yeah, he could have. But he was smart in, in partnering with a, a capital group because that way, if it goes under again, he d- he probably won't have to eat too many losses. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised The Rock hasn't been more, you know, involved in the business side of WWE. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, now that he's on his own away from WWE, because when he first started acting, Vince was getting, uh, you know, part of the percentage of what he was making for his movies, and now that he's like really on his own and uh, he works with his ex-wife uh Danny Garcia a lot um yeah I I think he probably wants to do it make his own moves business-wise yeah I I would not be shocked if The Rock maybe down the line did invest in in a wrestling company I know he's always very great grateful towards um WWE for giving him a start and everything like that but it just seems like a no brainer for him to be involved financially in, in some sort of wrestling company. Tuck your so, chin, brother. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> no, but he's, <laughs> he's definitely a guy that I could see down the line. If not buying the WWE, maybe getting into the wrestling business on his own, maybe starting something up. Yeah. That starting wouldn't shock company. me if he did. Yeah. I, I mean, the dude's got the money for it for sure. Let's see how much the rock is worth. Oh, it's got to be three hundred million. Yeah. Uh, he let's see. Definitely has the money to do it. He has the money to do it. I just don't think that he would ever want to compete with Vince or potentially put him out of business. Yeah, that's a good point. That, yeah, but I, that maybe that's why he's just like buying the the XFL for him is probably like, a, um, in some ways, a strangely a revenge project because he never made it to the nfl and he got cut from the cfl and then this dude comes back mm-hmm. and says fuck it i'm just gonna buy my own football league i'll be plays in it that would be sweet <laughs> but uh it looks here that he's worth somewhere around 400 million dollars wow. wow that is a lot of fucking money well i feel like every year he's the highest grossing actor in hollywood yeah let's see how much he makes per picture He's still fairly young. He's in his, what, uh, mid-40s? He'll be, he'll be 50. For a human being, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> like for an athlete, not, but for a human, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he was that close to 50. Yeah, he's 48. He will be 49 um, on May 2nd. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, an American-Canadian. I love, always love that American-Canadian. That always tickles me. Dwayne Douglas Johnson, also known by his ring name, The Rock, is an American-Canadian actor, producer, investor, and retired professional wrestler and former American football and Canadian football player. That's kind of a clunky sentence Mm. right there. 
Yeah, this dude is he gets paid crazy amounts of money. And then he's got his own tequila business and now he's got his own energy drink. I uh, he works with Under Armour for the like the rock um like fitness line and all that stuff. So got I'm a surprised. Sitcom. Yep. That is apparently oh, yeah. very popular. People love the rock. Uh you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he got into like supplements and shit like that too. I'd that's got to be the next step, right? He's yeah, got a, he hasn't uh, gotten into that because he's got an ice cream company that he's partnered with. I think it's called Salt and Straw. The dude, the Rock wow. is just I, making yeah, money. I never knew that. He's making money a hand over fist, dude. And people love him, so they're all gonna buy all of his shit. Will he be the president one day? I don't think he will become the president. For him, that probably just doesn't seem like the best move. Why would you get in the politics when you can just keep your squeaky clean image up and keep making money, crazy, crazy amounts of money, like selling ice cream and energy drinks on Instagram and making movies where you power bomb gorillas? <laughs> I wouldn't want to get I don't feel anybody would want to be president at this point. <laughs> it's a terrible gig, bro. <laughs> that job yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> I guess the premise of that Young Rock show is that it, kind of takes place in the future in like 2032 and he's running for president oh I, oh is it like just flashing back yeah to different moments in his life mm. and also i heard wow. like all the flashing back stories and you know how it's being told is totally just inaccurate <laughs> well, i mean like the guy that they got to play uh andre the giant has abs like stuff well, like that. Not even that. Like I guess like the stories and how it's portrayed. Like wrestlers being in Hawaii that would never have been there at that net time period. Or blah. Well, I get that it's just a TV show, but yeah, and like somehow his dad and Macho Man and Andre the Giant were all like wrestling at the same time. Like. Yeah, but but then he's like a teenager somehow. I, I I mean I haven't watched the show. I don't know how accurate it is, and obviously I know it's an exaggerated version of his life. Like if he told the stories of his life like how they were really told, it would probably be a way darker show. Be yeah, on HBO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like so I I, I, I <laughs> probably I, have the fucking Oz music is. Yeah, unfortunately, if they talk about some of the stuff that's uh, come out about his dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he kind of bury his dad in that show? Does he? Oh, I think he puts him over. He Because he seems oh, like maybe... he's like always gushing about his dad. I mean, I know when his dad kind of went through uh, all of the allegations that happened with him in the early 2000s, late 90s, I think he kind of distanced himself from his dad. And I'm sure they probably yeah. had animosity from when he was younger with everything that happened between his dad and his mom. There, I, I, I get the vibe that their relationship was very strained throughout different points of his life. But I don't think they want to go too, too deep into that on the show because it seems like it's supposed to be kind of like a feel-good yeah. uh, you know, sitcom. I'm going to have to check that out, man. I'm going to have to watch a couple episodes of uh, Young Rock See what all the inaccuracies are. I still haven't are. seen it either. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Well, you I can. Didn't uh... like Taco. What? His wife uh, is a babe. I'm, I'm looking her up right now. I don't. Think, I haven't really seen her before just now. I think her name is Lauren Hashian. She's a musician, singer, songwriter. Her dad, if I remember correctly, is or was. The drummer from Boston? Boston. Yep. Boston. Yeah. Sib Sib Hashian. Hope I'm saying that correct. Yeah. Who uh That's not right. Yeah. Had a tremendous afro back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that that afro is majestic. Shout out to Boston. The band, not the place. <laughs> More than a anyway. feeling. More than a feeling, that's right. Uh, I, I've got more than a feeling that uh, it is time for us to wrap this up. <laughs> uh, you guys got anything to say in closing? Nope. 
No? Nah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I I will plug really quickly uh, my girlfriend's podcast, uh, Three Ball Chicks. Go and check that out on Spy, uh, Spy Tunes, Spotify and iTunes. Um, it's a great podcast about, uh, you know, just being confident in yourself and people that, um, you know, navigating life with having alopecia. So check that out. And then also I want to plug my own t-shirt store, uh, tee.pub slash LIC slash DD t-shirts, but make sure you capitalize the DDT and the S in shirts. For some reason, if you do it lowercase, it won't come up. So I, I might need to fix that and make it all lowercase for, uh, people to get to it at an easier way. I, I just uploaded finally the um, cha- the Chaos House shirt, I call it, the Okada and Nakamura uh, like full house theme t-shirt, which was actually requested uh, by Mr. Kazmar. So yeah, go ahead, check that out. Buy it up. That's a fantastic shirt. I will be buying it. Thank you, thank you. In between... That. In between um, now and our next episode, I just want to wish everyone a happy 313, a happy Pi Day, happy Ides of March, happy Stone Cold Steve Austin Day, and a happy St. Patty's Day. A lot of shit happening. God, I, didn't right realize, I didn't even think about that. I just never even think about that. Damn, Lino. You know, thank you for, for reminding me how much uh, stuff happens on those days. We're also that on week. Spotify now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I forgot to say we're on, on, on iTunes again. We're on Spotify. And then the episodes will continue to be uploaded to um, YouTube. And we're going to try to keep up the uh, videos and try to add more short videos now that we're doing the podcast. Maybe chop up some of these longer podcasts and have shorter videos for people to see. And then, of course, uh, I put us on TikTok. I started a TikTok for Toph. Uh, I said that if we get a hundred followers, one of the hosts will do the June bug challenge on there. I don't even know if it'll be relevant by the time that we get a hundred followers, but the bet still stands. The challenge still stands. Um, EA wrestling fan for pretty much all of our social media. If you go on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff. If you type at TA wrestling fan, we should come up. Uh, so yeah. Check us out. We are all over the place. Podbean, TA Wrestling Fan. Podbean. Uh, man, so much, so much just happened since the last time we did an episode. So yeah, uh, check us out. And uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't come up after all of that. Something clever to take us into the catchphrase. So uh, we'll try to know. we'll try to be not so negative towards the wrestling business. Yeah, we'll be more positive. <laughs> next week i, I mean think it'll I, be... I still love it even though i think it oh, sucks i, I mean I it's kind of like my it's kind of <laughs> like how i feel about the detroit lions oh yeah 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 that makes sense I re- yeah I, i'm sure if john will be on he'll be more positive too because even in that reaction video for AEW, like the barbed wire he's the first one to react he's still so like polite and nice about it he's like oh god no oh no <laughs> And then me and Kaz are like, that fucking sucked. That was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to uh, Bruce Johnsky for being a, a beacon of positivity and uh, the wind beneath my wings. Anyway, tuck your chin. A radio.com sports station.